Hey guys, and welcome back to New Earth Alchemy, where we're trying to create a better world, and we're trying to create a better life for ourselves and everyone we love. And today I want to talk about how the, we think that that happens through grand gestures, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It happens a little bit at a time, like a minuscule amount at a time. Painfully slow. Like, have you ever been able to watch a flower bloom? or watch a tree grow. I mean, you can look out there and it's you, you can see its progress, but you can't actually watch the motion, the movement of it, the actual happening. And we forget that we are a part of nature, okay? We're, there's no difference between us and all of the other natural happenings of the world. We just perceive ourselves different. Like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're very, very different. And that's weird. And that's one of the biggest questions of the of life right like why why are we so different but we're not here to discuss that today we're here to focus on the fact that despite our differences from us and like humans and animals and plants we should actually move more at their pace rather than this fast pace that we've adopted honestly our nervous system absolutely hates the fast pace and the busy busy and the go go and the hustle hustle and the mountain of things that we're expected to do every single day either by ourselves or by society or by others around us our soul craves to do less to be slower go slower move slower Take our time and be intentional with our thoughts, with our words, with our emotions, with our actions and decisions. And yeah, patience is hard, but patience is necessary if we want to get to where we want to be. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Think about how you got to where you are now, how the world got to where it is now. And it didn't happen through just grand event after grand event after grand event. Now, the grand events happen, but they're rarer. They're more few and far between. And yes, when they happen, they often catapult us into something new pretty quickly. But, you know, and, and Mother Nature has that too, you know, with like volcanoes, tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, all sorts of things earthquakes but they're not happening all of the time right they're just happening every now and then and they're also out of our control so there's a story about like a monk or something who talked to some kids or something and was talking about how everyone wants to save the world but no one wants to help mom with the dishes and he went on to explain that very few people are going to ever have the opportunity to run into a heroically run into a burning building and save some children. But each and every one of us are presented with opportunities every single day to make a big difference in a small way. In these little bitty moments, these little bitty decisions, you know, Morgan Freeman said, how do you save the world? And it's one small random act of kindness at a time. These small random acts, these small moments in our day-to-day -day life that we can choose to do good, be good, be better, practice gratitude and tuning our energy, thinking about others, helping out where you can, all of these little things pile up to make more of an impact than the big things. Because the big things, although they are intense, they come on quick, they happen, and then they're gone, and then they're done, and then everything that they impacted begins to heal and adjust. The impact they leave may leave big scars, but ultimately they're not going to change a whole lot, right? They're not going to change how people are every single day, which is exactly what creates our reality, our world, our culture, our society. It's the little things every single day that we think that we do, that we believe, that we choose. The itty bitty, teeny tiny consistencies of change, sustained and sustained by one and then passed on to those around them just through living by example and embodying that representation of what we want. That's how we create long lasting change. That's, that's how we make a significant impact. We all want to change the world. We all have the ability to change the world, but it does not look like what you think it looks like. It does not come 
wrapped in a big grand gesture or big grand opportunity and if it does it's like one and done it's your 15 minutes of fame you ran into the burning building and saved some kids good job and what are you going to do for the rest of your life now people will praise you for maybe a year maybe a year and that's pushing it because people's they move on they move on it it's old news now it might come up from time to time as that one thing that you did that one time and and that's great you really impacted the lives of the everyone that was involved in that one incident but if you instead focus on making a small impact every single day just by being a beacon of light and hope and kindness and joy and yada yada all of the things that we want to embody as a society you're going to impact a whole lot more in the long run because remember we're always here until we die okay that's a long time and a lot of us don't think past the immediate too much you know because we're, we're too busy we don't have patience we don't want to sit and think about 15 20 years from now 30 years from now who are we going to be at that point in time we're just concerned about getting the beach bod for the summer that's right around the corner and I bring that up because we have this exact same mindset this uh, grandiose mindset about things uh, it, it translates into every area of our life so not just with like saving the world or but also with making these grand changes in our lives you know we go on this crash diet overnight and we overhaul everything that we're eating and our whole lifestyle around becomes around uh, losing weight and getting in shape or we don't like how life's going so we make this gr big move we move across the country into a whole new city whole new territory of way people live and we think that that's going to solve our, all of our problems and just to find out that oh we are our own problem and we came with us across country to this new place and I get it. I also really, really, really wanted to leave, was counting down the days until I could move across the country because I did not like where I was. And I never got that opportunity, never made that opportunity, chose different values and priorities instead. And here I am figuring it out. I have figured it out. I'm very happy I stayed, maybe, I guess. Every area has its problems, some more than others. Anyway, I'm moving on. Big changes are not going to happen instantly overnight, usually. And those ones, the tops that happen overnight and instantly, are usually not the tops of changes you want. They're usually very tragic. And we don't want tragic change, do we? We want happy change. We want good positive change, exciting change. And that is actually a lot less exciting than you think. It's slow. It's a progress. For example, uh, something that comes to mind is each time I found out I was pregnant, it's, you know, this huge moment and wow, everything's going to be different. Everything's, oh, you know, you might have like all of these emotions arise and it's very exciting, but also nothing's happening right now. It's just now you know, and now you just have to sit around and wait and each time I found out I was pregnant, that's exactly how it went. It was like, <gasps> oh my gosh. And like everything was heightened and then everything was different. And then, but it, also everything was exactly the same and nothing had changed. And so now I've got all of this excitement and emotions and they're bursting out of me. But also like, it's okay. Now I, I guess I need to calm down and chill because, ah. There's nothing to do except for sit around and wait. And I'm not the only one that actually that makes that analogy and example. Now that I think about it, they're always talking about how these big, good changes have a gestation period. So there's like, you know, the idea comes into your head of this change that you want. And that's essentially that now you're pregnant with the idea and the thought and it has to gestate and it has to come to full term before it can be born into the world into reality and it's all very exciting and it's all 
work and intense, but also it's all very mundane and simple all at the same time. So I know that we're all in a big hurry to get to a destination that doesn't exist and we want everything to be different now and we want to be healed now and we want to be having our great life and manifested everything now but uh, I'm going to I'm going to tell you something that you hate to hear over and over again it's not about the destination because the destination doesn't actually exist it's about the journey it's about the day to day getting there. And that's worth more than the destination anyway. Because if you're just handed your manifestations and your healedness and your abundance and whatever else you're wanting to get, think about the things that we get for free in life. We oftentimes take them for granted. They don't have as much value to us as, say, something that we earned, especially something that we earned earned through working really, really hard for a really, really long time. When you finally get it, it's just like angels sing and nothing's better than that. But also, if you're in alignment with who you are and your high self and all of that, the energy is, you know, you're focused on that, then it's not hard work. It's fun work. and, And that's great. Because fun work doesn't feel like work. It just feels like fun. And that's where you should be focused is on things that feel good. In not a hedonistic type of way, but more of a progressive, productive type of way. Like, I... I love sitting at my computer and doing these podcast episodes. I love editing them. I love the SEO work that goes behind all the background stuff so that you can find it. I love creating the artwork for the cover art. I love making stickers that I post and stuff, you know. I love teaching yoga. I love talking about philosophy. I have built all of this for both you and myself, and it has been nearly 10 years of lots and lots and lots and lots of work, and none of it like it was just it was fun I enjoyed it because I turned my hobby passion thing into a business not that I'm saying that you find happiness by creating a business Uh, that's just how it happened for me that was where my happiness was but it unfolded because I was looking for ways to spend my free time that I enjoyed I was having fun with And a lot of us think that we're spending our free time the way we want to spend it. And we're laying around, we're scrolling, we're watching TV. And all of those things are great in moderation. But when you look back on how much time you spend doing those things, do you get good feelings or do you get yucky feelings? And the life that we want, the life that the reality that we want to step into, the timeline is created one moment at a time every single day all day long, every present moment. And that's why we practice. We practice being in the present and being mindful of the present moment and being consciously aware of the present moment and watching our thoughts, watching our words, watching our actions and decisions, all of our interactions with everybody and everything and making them purposeful, intentional, And we want all of that to be as sustainable as possible, right? Again, we're here for the rest of our lives. This is how we create whatever it is that we want to create, through consistency. And we can't do that with big, grand gestures, because then we're going to get burnt out, you know? That's why diets don't work, lifestyle changes do. It has to be sustainable if you want sustainable results. And the grand gesture stuff, that's just going to burn us out really quick. We're not going to be able to keep up with that all the time. So we have to make it simple. We have to make it as easy as possible. And the most powerful tools that you have available to you reside in your mind, in your body, all the time. Anytime you think about them, you can pull them out and practice. That's one of the most beautiful things that we have about all of this this stuff. It doesn't it's not a thing that you have to put on your to-do list, another thing that you have to get to and make time for. I talk I've talked a thousand times about the misconceptions of meditation and how people think that they don't have time to meditate. It's not something that you have to get around to doing. 
It's a state of being. It's something that you can access anytime you think of it, no matter what you do, you're doing, no matter what you have going on, no matter where you are. The hardest part is remembering to do it because if we just allow our programming to take over, it's going to have us over in le left field waiting for a home run to be hit our way in a game of chess. It's not coming because we're not playing the right game. We think things have to be harder than what they are. So we're standing out in the middle of a field under the hot sun in really uncomfortable clothes when what we really need to be doing is sitting in the air conditioning, sweatpants and a t-shirt, living our best life. And those are metaphors and analogies, by the way. But also totally concrete for some of us and what we should be doing. It's for you to decide. It's for you and your highest self, your best self, to talk about and figure out. Which is only hard if you let it be hard. If you fight what is. All that resistance, all that attachment, all that friction around things not being how you feel they should be. When really you should just be focusing on acceptance, allowance, relaxing. Relaxing the muscles in your body, you know, your face and shoulders right now, your jaw, clearing your mind, creating space in your mind, which allows anxiety and overwhelm to dissipate. And you do that by making everything simpler, making everything easier, dialing it back. We focus entirely too much on the manifesting of what it is that we're wanting, and we get so stressed out when it's not happening right now, right now, right now which just pushes it away further and further. All we need to focus on is keeping everything relaxed, everything easy, living in the moment. Right now, I am thankful. Right now, I am grateful. Right now, I am happy. Right now, I am healthy. Right now, right now. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We have set ourselves on some sort of path in some sort of direction, and that's the way we're walking, but we never know when something may be thrown in our path or when the path may fork unexpectedly. And when that does, if that does, I mean, it will, it will always, we'll always have forks in the road. We will then readjust to the now that is then. Focusing on our happiness, focusing on our path of least resistance, doing what makes us happy, doing what keeps us peaceful and relaxed for the benefit of ourself, our health, our energy levels, the people around us, get our energy right, and then all of the other things will fall into place. We don't know what that looks like. We don't know what the whole puzzle looks like. You have to let go of anything that you think you know, <laughs> and everything becomes a whole lot easier. Anyway, it's a whole mindset thing. It's a whole programming thing. We have this programming that we have based on situations and circumstances that we've been presented with and experienced along with cultural and social beliefs and standards and values, which are sometimes great and other times hugely outdated and making no sense now. The subconscious mind is our autopilot programming, but our conscious mind, the one at the forefront of awareness, is how we reprogram all of those other subconscious programmings that are not serving us. Just a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Again, remembering is the hardest part, because when you're in the throes of life and everything's going on, sometimes it's really hard to remember to breathe, to relax the shoulders, to slow everything down, step outside and get some fresh air, maybe go for a walk, throw some positive affirmations in there that'll help reprogram the beliefs quicker. You know, when you start having these, uh, like, fears pop up, noticing that they're there and then recountering them with a truth an affirmation that's true because affirmations that were that are not true our mind knows our body knows our programming knows our spirit knows that it's not true and it's like ah, it doesn't feel right the, the energy is off so instead of like because a lot of people want to be like okay affirmations i'm a millionaire i'm a millionaire i'm a millionaire i you're hmm? <laughs> that's actually the opposite of helpful because when you say that, every cell in your body rejects it as false. They're like, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. And then you're focusing on, in, unintentionally, but you're focusing on the lack of instead of the having of. So you want to find things that are true. So instead of I'm a millionaire, maybe I have all that I need. Everything else is extra. All of my needs are met. I have plenty of food to eat. 
I routinely collect things that are on my want list. Gosh, I'm so lucky and abundant that I have things that I want. I wonder what else cool things the universe is going to bring me in life. I cannot wait to find out. You see how I turned like affirmations into a little story about myself? That was cool. That's also a thing that you can do. Like, I wonder what it would be like if XYZ. And then you can just daydream about that and just be happy with the mental image, mental story that you got. That's what visualizations are. They're, they're just little stories that you can engulf yourself in your mind for a little bit and focus on the energy. Practice the energy and the tuning of your energy to those types of things. And you do that by just like sitting back and feeling what it would feel like to have those things. How exciting it would be to have XYZ. And then you let go of the attachment of that feeling coming from that specific thing and that thing only. And allow just to be like, yep, that's how I want to feel. Like you create this whole story in your head, this whole vision of how you're a millionaire by the pool that your friends are hanging out with you at your mansion, yada yada. And you really just engulf yourself in the feeling that that would feel like. And then you go, ha, ah, yep, that's the, that's the feeling I want, universe. Let me feel that. Can I feel that? And then you just leave it up to the universe to decide what to bring to you in order to engage those emotions for you. And it will as long as you're paying attention moment and mo moment by moment and remembering to be thankful for every possible thing that you can all the time, always. Because sometimes we get distracted and forget to be thankful for the little things that we have. Because remember, the little things are what are important. Because all of the mansions and the houses and the cars and the pools and all of that mean Again, absolutely nothing. If you don't have relationships in your life that fill you up, if you don't have a sense of purpose and fulfillment, because you're not always going to be partying by the pool, even if you do get that, right? You still got to chop wood and carry water. Still got to do the processes that require just basic living life, which are more or less the same processes that you're doing now. They, they may look a little different if you get to that image specifically, but they're not going to look a whole lot different. You still got to eat the food. You still got to drive in the traffic. You still got to play face with people you don't want to play face with. Most likely, you still got to clean the bathroom. Still got to fold the laundry. And if you can't figure out a way to be happy and peaceful right now, then you're not going to find it then either. Because with riches or fame or whatever, whatever that it is that people think that they want comes a lot more pressure and a lot more stress and a lot more overwhelm. Like real quick, we'll wrap this up with a story that I heard about a fisherman and a businessman. And the businessman met this fisherman. He said, how, how often are you out here? And the fisherman said, every day for about two hours. And the fisherman said, I mean, sorry, the businessman said, well, how many fish do you catch in that time? And the fisherman said, ah, about 10. And five feeds my family. And then five I take to town and I sell. And the businessman said, well, what do you do with the rest of your day? And the fisherman said, well, I like to sleep in so I don't get out here until a little bit later and then I like to walk my dog and hang out with my wife and kids and then I go hang out with my friends in the evening and sometimes I take a nap and I don't know maybe he was doing a little gardening or something but anyway the businessman goes well if you just spent two more hours out here a day you could catch twice as many fish five would still feed your family and then you could take 15 to town and sell them and then you could afford to buy a boat. And then you could buy, and then you could catch even more fish. And then your profit would increase. And then you could hire people to do the fishing for you. Who would then catch even more fish because you have more manpower to make it happen. And then you can buy a big house. And you can buy a bigger boat. And just continue increasing your profits. And the fisherman went, well, what would I do then? And the businessman goes, well, you could do whatever you want. And the fisherman goes, but that's what I'm doing right now. And pretty much every single one of us fall into exactly that trap right there. Where we're always chasing more, 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 more in hopes that one day we can do less. 
and just be happy and hang out with our family and friends and loved ones and pets and take naps when we can in reality just focus on those values and priorities up front and notice and recognize that all of that other stuff is just extra glitter and glam that we don't need and is probably going to bring more stress with it and granted our society and culture makes a lot of that pretty difficult especially when we're all sectioned off individually in these little nuclear families and whatnot which is why i also talk a whole lot about community building and village building because in order for all of us to live these lives like that these simpler lives in our society and culture requires us to kind of band together a little bit usually so, no, I'm not delusional. I totally understand that it's a lot easier said than done in most cases. But it is something for us to work towards. And we will all collectively get there a whole lot quicker if we're all on the same page with priorities and values and mindsets and all of the stuff that I've been talking about. Because most of us don't have our priorities straight. We think we do. Other people think we do because they see us working all the time. And, you know, we glamorize the hustle. We, we praise one another and ourselves for being stressed out and overworked all the time. Making ourselves sick. That's not a priority that makes sense. Oh, man. We just need to love each other and help each other a little bit more than what we do, you know. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, speaking back on affirmations real quick, a lot of my stickers are affirmation stickers to help you remember practicing and what to practice because remembering is the hardest part. And I really like practicality. So I got some practical stickers in the earthandwater.co shop if you're interested. Um, anything else? Text me, email me, yada yada, whatever. Reach out, let me know. And in the meantime, I love you so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. I will talk to you next week.